Hello, my awesome project managers. Those of you getting ready for the PMP exam, I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm going to sensitize you to the importance of hybrid project management and how to get even more hybridized in your thinking. So if you speak to anyone who's taken the exam in the past year, they'll tell you that the exam consists of questions that are labeled as hybrid. These hybrid questions sometimes are overt in that you get a warning up front that this is a hybrid question. For example, you're a project manager working on a hybrid project, or you are seeking to use a hybrid framework or hybrid model. All that language suggests mixing of predictive and agile. So how do you get around these is the question. You know what the answer is? The answer is through the Agile Practice Guide, first and foremost. The Agile Practice Guide contains what I call hidden pages, even though they're not really hidden, they're in plain sight, but I call them hidden pages because they are the pages that most students don't even know exist. And this is in the Agile Practice Guide from pages 90 to 90. I would advise you to open up these hidden pages and really understand what PMI is saying as far as your perspective as a project manager, as a team member, looking at the knowledge areas from an agile lens. That's right, you heard it right, viewing the knowledge areas from an Agile lens. Now, table A1-2, it's titled Application of Agile in PMBOK Guide Knowledge Areas. If you read each section, you'll see that you've got section four, section five, and it goes all the way down, pretty much taking the chapters in the sixth edition and giving you a high-level blurb about how you would apply these knowledge areas in an Agile work process. For example, under integration, it reads, iterative and agile approaches promote the engagement of team members as local domain experts in integration management. The team members determine how plans and components should integrate. The expectations of the project manager, as noted in the PMBOK guide, sixth edition, don't change in an adaptive environment, but control of the detailed product planning and delivery is delegated to the team. The project manager's focus is on building a collaborative decision-making environment and ensuring the team has the ability to respond to changes. So what are we saying? The whole idea about integrating all of that planning that's done is now done by the team. Scope management, if you read that same page, it points you to the right mindset, the right approach for scope in Agile. So let's read real quick. In projects with evolving requirements, high risk or significant uncertainty, the scope is often not understood at the beginning of the project or it evolves during the project. Agile methods deliberately spend less time trying to define and agree on scope in the early stage of the project. Now what I want you to do is read the rest on your own, but I'm going to give you the top of the waves. Okay? So I've already talked about integration. Team members are the local domain experts and they're involved in planning and integrating planning. Scope, we don't scope everything out in the beginning. We do it progressively. We've got an overarching idea, but that is not the be all end all. It will evolve. In schedule, we have time boxes. So the whole idea about detailed scheduling is taken off the table. We schedule in a just-in-time fashion as we get into the sprint. We have sprint planning. Same for cost. Projects with high degrees of uncertainty or where the scope is not yet fully defined are not going to benefit from detailed cost calculations due to frequent changes. Instead, lightweight estimation methods are used. And you know what? When we use earned value, even in the world of Agile, we're doing it from a different perspective. We're not doing it from a cost perspective. We're thinking more about story points and about what we might have planned for that sprint. Think about it like this. Everything in the world of Agile is done lightweight for speed, lightweight 
for risk coping mechanisms. The area of quality is no different. In order to navigate changes, agile methods call for frequent quality and review steps built in throughout the project rather than towards the end of the project. Think about the concept of MVP, the minimum viable product. That in and of itself is a quality initiative. A lot of folks don't understand this, but building the wrong thing is not quality. So our MVP helps us to right off the bat focus on building what the customer truly wants. And every sprint, the customer has the opportunity of saying, right, you're on track or you're off track. Resource management, same thing. Projects with high variability benefit from team structures that maximize focus and collaboration. Quick collaboration, quick communication. Collaboration is intended to boost productivity and facilitate innovative problem solving. Although the benefits of collaboration apply to other project environments, collaborative teams are often critical to success on projects with high degree of variability and rapid changes. Are you seeing that same theme? Rapid changes, high variability, tending towards complexity, tending towards anarchy in some cases and chaos. We need to respond quicker. Same for communications. In addition to posting project artifacts in a transparent fashion, reviews with our stakeholders are intended to promote communication. Project environments subject to various elements of ambiguity and change have an inherent need to communicate evolving and emerging details more frequently than in traditional projects. What about risk? Agile in and of itself is a risk coping mindset. High variability environments by definition incur more uncertainty and risk. And to address this, projects managed using adaptive approaches make use of frequent reviews of incremental work. Same thing. Additionally, the requirements are kept as a living document that is updated regularly and work may be reprioritized. What do you think that is for? It's a risk coping mechanism. We reprioritize work based on an improved awareness and understanding of current risk exposure of marketplace conditions. What about procurement? In agile environments, specific sellers may be used to extend the team. This collaborative working environment can lead to a shared risk procurement model. Larger projects may use an adaptive approach for some deliverables and a more stable approach for other parts. So page 77 in the Agile Practice Guide and page 78 begins to go into the details of these flexible type of contracts. We could have a master services agreement for an overall engagement with the adaptive work being placed in an appendix or supplement. Last but not least in stakeholder management, projects experiencing a high degree of change require active engagement. What does the manifesto tell us? Business people and developers should work together daily throughout the project. It's for a reason. In order to accelerate the sharing of information within and across the organization, agile methods promote aggressive transparency. The intent of inviting stakeholders to our ceremonies and reviews or posting project artifacts in public spaces, such as information radiators, is to bring to light as quickly as possible any misalignments, dependencies, or other issues related to the changing project dynamics and environment. So my friends, I hope this makes sense to you, and I hope you can see how important it is to be flexible, to be ambidextrous when you're going into the PMP exam. Don't go into the exam thinking that everything is going to be plainly agile or plainly predictive. You'll get a root shock. You need to be able to shift as quickly as that between an agile thought and a predictive thought and to be able to meld the world so that you can see through the facade of it's hybrid, but you'll be able to boil it down to what is it as a project professional. Whether you call it agile, hybrid, or predictive, on the exam, it's not going to make much of a difference because your mind needs to be able to shift between concepts. I would advise you to understand the practices talked about from pages 49, 50 forward really well from the Agile Practice Guide and understand the practices of traditional. 
so that when you see them mixed up, you'll be able to rationalize. I see through this, there's smoke and mirrors. I see this is really just scope management, or this is really just scope. And in the world of agile, this is how we do it. In the world of predictive, this is how we do it. In a hybrid environment, this would make a difference, this would not. That's the level of thinking that you need to be at going into the exam. I hope this makes sense, and I hope this helps your PMP exam prep. Remember, you can sign up for any of our training and coaching at praiseon.com. That's P-R-A-I-Z-I-O-N.com. Or go on down to agileprinciple.com for agile boot camps, half days. Or go on down to hpmexam.com for full-on hybrid immersion. Looking forward to seeing you in one of our classes. Bye for now.